Hello and welcome. With this, we are going to start a series of inventions that I did during my college days. And this is the first one that I did in the second semester, the first year. And this is about plotting sine wave. Of course, plotting sinusoidal waves is a very easy thing in today's world. Uh, you don't need a very sophisticated CAD software for that. But during those days and doing it mechanically was a novelty. So that's why I uh, came up with this. In this series, we'll be also looking at another rafter, uh, which is a development done after this, which will add the sine waves. And then a third one, which will have those sine waves damped and added. So let's set it in motion and see what it does. There. So now we'll see what are its parts. How can we change the wavelength, the amplitude, and even the phase of this sine wave? Here is our first link or first component of the mechanism. It's a disk which is capable of rotation about this vertical axis. And embedded in this disk is a pin over here at a radius which is equal to the amplitude of the sine wave to be plotted. So as the disk rotates, it executes a uniform circular motion, this pin will also execute a uniform circular motion. Then we have a slotted link which is engaging with the pin and it is going to filter out one component of the motion of the pin. So as the pin moves, its Y component, its motion along this direction will not affect the uh, motion of this slotted link at all because it will just allow the pin to slide through this slot. But if the pin moves in the X direction, then the slotted link will be dragged with it. So out of the X and Y components of the uniform circular motion of this pin, we are filtering out only the X component. And as you know, uh, the X component of uniform circular motion or the Y component for that matter is a simple harmonic motion. And once we have simple harmonic motion, that's a way that leads to a sinusoidal wave. To constrain the motion of this cross link only to X axis, we'll have to provide some kind of guides over here and here. And that is done by the frame. You can see these guides here. And it not only provides those guides, but it also provides the support for the top disc shaft and many other components of the mechanism. So let's start adding them one by one. So first we'll add these wheels, which will be capable of moving on the paper, rolling on the paper, and taking this mechanism forward. Then coming from the top disc is this bevel gear over here and engaging with that is another bevel gear. So with help of these bevel gears, we are taking the rotation about vertical axis of the top disc and transferring it to rotation about horizontal axis. Then connected to that is a cone pulley and another cone pulley and they are connected with a bed. So as the mechanism rolls on the paper, these wheels rotate that rotates this cone pulley through the belt that rotates this cone pulley, then this bevel gear, this bevel gear, and the top disc. So now our entire mechanism is connected. Okay? So the motion of these lower wheels, the forward uh, displacement of this mechanism is connected to the rotational motion of the top disc and thereby the simple harmony. All that we need to do now is to add a pencil which can trace the sinusoidal wave on the paper. And we'll add one more thing, which is not part of the motion kinematics as such, but simply for support. And that is this front wheel. Uh, we'll keep this front wheel capable of rotating. So we can plot sine waves, not only along the straight line, but also along a circle. Something like uh, the de Broglie wave of an electron around its orbit. And that's it. We are ready to set it in motion. And this is how it is going to plot the sinusoidal wave and it's a mathematically perfect sinusoidal wave we are, because we are taking a simple harmonic motion and we are adding a forward component, a linear component to it, which will plot the wave. Now think of the variations you can have. First of all, how to change the amplitude of the wave? Well, just take the top pin and pin it, embed it at a different radius. The closer you are to the center, smaller will be the amplitude. And how about wavelength? Well, wavelength is nothing but how much it moves forward in one oscillation, in one complete rotation of the top disk. So it is just a matter of changing the velocity ratio. And we can do that by changing 
this belt position. So if, if we move this belt over here or over here, the velocity ratio between this lower wheel, which are taking it forward, and the top disc, which is making this pencil oscillate, that would change. So the wavelength can be changed. And uh, how about the phase? Well, lift the mechanism, rotate the top disc to any desired position, and then keep it on the paper and start drawing. So we can give it some initial phase, an epoch. So you can plot waves like sine omega t plus phi, some initial phase. So they are not just sine waves, but they could be cos waves also because there is hardly any difference. Here. So next time we'll see an improvement on this mechanism, further development, where we'll take these sine waves, many of them, two or more, and they will be of different amplitudes, different wavelengths and different phases and we will add them up to find their resultant. So in other words, given a curve, we will be sort of imagining it to be periodic over a certain domain and we will take its Fourier transform and that Fourier terms one by one will be setting on our mechanism and we will be adding it to get the resultant. Okay. So that we will see next time. Thank you for watching.